Roddy, congratulations, and I'll get to the wild finish soon, but is it fair to say that that game was won in the first 20 minutes because it just felt like you guys were defending <coughs> the line for ever? They had 85% of the territory, all the ball, and you conceded one try in that stretch. Yeah, they were completing it 100%, and we spoke at half-time, I think... Um, when they got out to the 8 nil lead, they were probably 60-40 possession and completing it 100%. We spoke at half-time about the, the try they scored, um, but we also thought on the back of that, the tries we scored, because defensively we kept turning up for each other. Yeah, they crossed the line, but you know if you give a good team that much possession down there and they complete so well, that's going to happen. But our forwards or our team front-loaded their energy defensively and they've built two years on the back of hard work. You know, middles who turn up for each other and work hard, and that was what we seen in that first stanza. So you do all the hard work early and at the end Tamika scores the two tries. Are we looking at the best player on the planet right now? Well, I think if we look at the Dally M results, she certainly is. Um, but I'll, I'll tell you one thing about Tamika, she's extremely humble and she'll talk about her teammates and how good they went. You know, we look at the one-on-one -on -one strip from Sheridan. We look at the captain's defence. We look at CJ's second, second stint, how good that was. Um, Yasmin Clydesdale's effort areas, you know, I think that's... Tamika's un undoubtedly a class player, but uh, she knows that the team around her allows her to do a job. Hannah, Hannah how, how much confidence does it give the team to know that you've got someone like Tamika in those clutch moments? Yeah, look, it gives us a lot of confidence. We know she's very safe under the high ball, um, and I think that's where we really thrive. But I've said before, she she's a classy player, but the people around her allow her to play like that. I think we've seen Tamika in systems where she hasn't been able to flourish. But at Newcastle, the way we play, she's able to do what she wants and she's able to get around the ball and jump the short side. So I think that's a full credit to the girls around her as well, being able to play like that. I just wanted to move back to you said that one-on-one -on -one trip from Sheridan was a total game changer. It did shift the momentum. Um, you know, what, what did you think of you know, her performance today, given the fact it's her first season in rugby league? Uh, I think she's had a stellar year. Um, you know, Sher for her to have the, the trust in us when we met with her and she'd only played two games of rugby league to say, yep, that's the club that I want to be at shows uh, one, you know, it's, it's, it's a great backing for our club, but to play in every single NRLW game and acquit herself like she has and win a grand final shows that, um, you know, she's a, an extremely talented player who works hard and she's um, methodical about her preparation and she'll have an extremely long career in the NRLW. Ron, just back to Tamika for one sec. She puts yeah. in a kick in that second half that goes dead, I think. Another mm. one's gathered by the fullback. But then when the game's on the line, she wants the ball in her hands. She wants to try that kick. She gets it. She scores. What does it say about her that she's willing to keep doing that even if it doesn't succeed at first? Well, those things aren't a fluke. So we play, you know, when you're at training, you play a lot of different games or small-sided games where Tamika practices that. Um, you know, we put them under pressure in attack and to, you'll see Tamika try that time and time again. She doesn't get it right at training, but I'll tell you what, she keeps practice and that's why when the game's on the line under fatigue at training or the game's on the line under fatigue out there, she can get it done. It's been about 30 minutes, I think, since full time, but has yeah. it sunk in just how special the past two years are, for, what you've been able to achieve? For me, it has. I, I reckon um, last year I, I didn't get to have my mum down here or my sisters. This time I did. Uh, my family's always there. Uh, seen the crowd, the Newcastle crowd out there and, and all our players' families and our staff's families. Um, you know, from day one, since, since this team started playing, you know, they've interacted with the community, they're invested in the community and the community repay us. You know, we look at the, uh, the two record-breaking crowds we had this year, our supporters just turn up and, and because they know that we're going to leave a performance out there that, that honours tradition, uh, inspires the next generation of players and, and, and it's going to have plenty of grit in it. Um, and then we go to the standalone crowd, the, the first of its kind or the largest of its kind in Newcastle. It just, just shows what this group has, has created. Um, we've got some wonderful ambassadors for our club, our community and, and, and wonderful athletes. Um, I reckon our staff talk all the time. They, they are in awe how they turn up at each training session and they've got a lot going on in their life and they present the best version of themselves and they make us better staff every day. Hey, no. What's it mean to you personally as well, given what you've been through and the fact that, you know, you're able to be, you know, lead this team this year? I don't think it's sunk in yet. I don't think it will for a while. Obviously last year was a different story, but Ronald and the club made me feel a part of it. And I'll never forget that. So to be able to do that again with a great bunch of girls and go back to back, like we had people doubting us from day one. We had people saying, you've lost too many players. You won't be able to do it again. We, we heard all that, but we shut it out. We stuck to our game plan. We knew what we were doing. We knew we were going to be hunted and we wanted to hunt everyone back. So to be able to do that with your home crowd, home team, 
little sister is pretty special. Could I just jump in on the back of that? I think it hasn't sunk in for Hannah, but um, what, what sunk in for me is that she gets to play in a grand final with a little sister. I see the bond they've got in the relationship and what they do. And we did a jersey presentation on Friday night where they presented each other with their jerseys and spoke about you know, what they mean to each other and what they're going to do for each other out there today. And the raw emotion you know, that they showed says to me, um, or just showed us how close they actually were. And um, when they go back and reflect on this, this is a moment that is, it's a moment that'll be in, uh, in history, you know, forever, in the record books forever. And they get to share it as a brother, as a sisters. So kind of continue on from what Hannah said before, you lost some players from last year, but some of the key players that you have kept are some of the local girls like Hannah, Jesse, and Caitlin, for example. Was that an important factor, just trying to keep some of the more local girls in the team? Well, I reckon, um, I reckon you want to, uh, we signed everyone we wanted to sign. We've said that all along. Everyone spoke about who we lost. And I'm privately, when we were talking in our, in our team meetings, you know, we would echo that same sentiment. We signed the players we wanted to sign and we knew we would be hard to beat and we knew we were going to all work extremely hard. And that wasn't driven by the coaches. That was driven by the players, how hard they wanted to work. They were so hungry. This team's created history time and time again. And, the, and it's um, the first of its kind. And, I'll celebrate tonight in Newcastle. <laughs> hey, Hannah, can you just say, like, as Ron, Ronnie just touched on, what it meant to you to, to do that with Jesse? Yeah, look, it's pretty special. She came up straight away and gave me a big hug and said we did it. So I think that just echoes how much it means to us and our family. I saw mum and dad in the stand and mum had glasses on, but I could tell she was crying. So <laughs> <laughs> it means a lot to our family. Um, but not only that, a lot to the club. Like the club have backed us. Like oh, I had a serious knee injury, and they could have said see you later, but they didn't. They stuck by me. They helped me with my rehab, and, and here we are. And I just wanted to repay the club and, and say a big thank you for not only supporting me but Jesse as well. Well, talking about the knee injury, I think you went down in that first 15 minutes. And you're on the turf for a little bit. Was it what was going through your mind? Then were you sort of thinking, oh no, no, not again? Like, uh, <laughs> look, to be honest, I was a bit concerned. But I knew we were on the ropes, and I just wanted to give our team a little bit of a breather. <laughs> uh, but it did, it did hurt my left knee a little bit, and um, just wanted to make sure I, I checked it out and said well to Ben, just have a look. But um, yeah, we're on the ropes, so just a bit of a tactical breather there. And what about when uh, second half, the double HIA, and then I think you went down the next set, maybe it was the same thing, you just wanted to I take a breather. But I mean, what were you sort of thinking at that point? Like, you lose two, possibly three players, like, it's a pretty stressful situation. Yeah, like it's not ideal, um, but I thought there was a few um, crusher tackles and I thought that was a crusher on me, but it wasn't. Um, so I just wanted to, to make sure I was okay and uh, have a chat with the physios and make sure everything was sweet. You talk about you're on the ropes, didn't help that it was 37 degrees out there. <laughs> if it was hot for us in the media box, how hot was it out there for you? It didn't feel like 37 out there. Um, I remember the first 10 minutes we, we were blowing, um, but we knew what we had to do and we had to stick to our game plan and we knew they were going to come at us. They're a tough team, they're a quality team. I said it from day one, we knew they were going to be in the finals. Um, so it didn't really feel like 37 out there, but that wasn't a factor for us through the week. Um, we knew it was going to be hot, but we had to move on with the job and we have to, had to get the job done, so we didn't really think too much about it. Hannah, we spoke a couple weeks ago, you said that you came to Newcastle looking to build a dynasty. I mean, you've lost two games in two years, two premierships to go with it. Is this a dynasty now? Uh, we'll see. Uh, that was the goal. Um, but we've still got work to do. We, I think we've still got a lot to work on as a club um, and as a team. But um, yeah, that was definitely the goal coming here. Um, Ron, you often say that you want a performance that the club and the community can be proud of. Mm. Why was that one today? I just I think things didn't go our way in both halves early in the halves, um, and, and you know when you when you're in when you're in the pressure cooker and the volume gets turned up in a grand final, teams can wilt, and we didn't. And I just think that um, you know we spoke about it. they're going to come out and start fast. We need to match them, and we tried to, but they went a little bit quicker than us. They had more possession. They got a couple of penalties, so. Um, but, you know, we were sitting in the coach's box going, we haven't had our chance down there yet. So I reckon that we just withstood that and they scored a try. Um, but I reckon we just withstood it, withstood it. And when our turn came, we went up there and applied the blowtorch. Um, and then the same thing in the second half. They had their opportunities, I thought, to, to really maybe ice it. But again, um, when the time came, you know, we come out the other side. You know, we've been in the deep end of the pool all year where teams have chased us or teams have tried to hold us down and we've come out the other side because we work so hard for each other and we've seen that again today. 
and it took to the, the back end of the game before we finally secured it. So I reckon that's one of the, the most important you know, things for, from my perspective. Hannah, is this a moment that you dreamed of in the backyard at, at Cameron Park and you've reached the top previously in NRLW, but to do it in red and blue, what does that mean? Yeah, it's huge. Um, as a little girl watching the Knights play, it, you wanted to do that, but there wasn't a pathway, there wasn't an opportunity for us. So to not only have the opportunity, but to do it for your hometown is something pretty special. Um, and I'm just really honoured to be able to lead a great group of girls that have no egos and just want to play good footy. So it's huge for us and um, we'll, we'll never forget it. Ryan, you've now won 17 of the past 19 games. Can the, the, the club keep this up? Continue to dominate the competition like it is? It's a pretty special playing group. Uh, I've got no doubt with some, uh, you know, some, some work through the, the next six months, there's no reason. It's going to be hard. There's no reason they can't be there again. You know, I think the big thing from our perspective is going away, assessing where we're at, understanding where we need to improve because the competition will grow and it'll develop again next year. Um, putting different things in place because as a club we've got a we've got a great program, but I still think it can be better. You know, there's some things that we need to to make sure that we're working on to to improve. Um, and there's no reason that you know the growth for our our squad can't be exponential over the next six months and be ready to go round one next year. What about your future? Will you be back? I'll be coaching. Um, from my perspective. The club have spoke to me about doing a different role. I told them I wouldn't make a decision until after today. Whether I have the ability to coach this team and develop them, I'm unsure. I need to work out whether I have the skill set to, to go again. I will tell you one thing, when I first sat down with, um, with the club, I said I would love for no, no other re I would love for the opportunity to take this team to three grand finals. And that's still something that burns within me. Just one thing before we go, if you don't mind, I just wanted to, um, I wanted to commend the Titans on the job they've done. When, they, when we played them in Newcastle, I knew they'd be extremely hard to beat. Um, and I thought that day after we played them that if they got through to the, the semi-finals, which I was confident they would, they'd be the team we'd play if we got there. So I want to commend them on the job they've done up there. They've invested in their program and it's great to see um, for them to get some recognition and be there on the final day. Um, and further to that, I reckon for the the group, our playing group, like uh, you know, our staff and our club and our community are indebted to what you have done. Um, you know, it's to present the best version of yourself each day and create history time and time again, and make others more significant than you. You know, than than, than the group shows how special you actually are.